Hi guys and welcome to another DSI technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to talk about the ability to invoke decision server rules, otherwise known as ODM standard, from within a DSI environment. So DSR, decision server rules, is the ability to describe business rules in uh, uh, in in the ODM product using a development tool called uh, uh, ODM uh, Rule Designer, uh, we can define uh, tables and rules in BAL where a decision is invoked. So a decision is we pass in a request and the request contains input parameters and then rules are executed against those input parameters and a result is decided. So here is a very simple rule where we've got an input parameter of a type and a price and we return a score. Now if the type is green and the price is 10 or more, we return a score of 5. If the input type is blue and the price is 20 or more, we return a score of 20. The rules aren't important here. What is important to understand is that these kind of rules can be written by business developers without having to be IT literate. There's a whole bunch of technology associated with ODM standard decision server rules that make uh, the management of these rule values exposed to business folks without having to go anywhere near Eclipse or other technical characteristics. So in this story, we're going to assume that you understand ODM standard, DSR, that you know how to write rules and that you have deployed some rules out to a rule execution server server. So these rules are now available to be called. Now if we bring up the rule execution server environment and we look at our rule apps we can see that uh, here I've got a rule deployed and I can drill into this particular rule and if we look in here we have an operation and we look at the attributes of this operation from a service invocation we see that it can be invoked via rest I can hit the test button I can say that we're going to invoke this request with JSON and we say execute the request and it comes about like a score of zero but if I change the price to be 30 of them of a type of blue for example run it again it comes back with a score of 20 where did that come from well if we look again at our rules here we see that if the type is blue and the score is uh, and the price is 20 or more we come back with a score of 20 so if I change this to be blue and change this to be a score of 10 then if we run this again we should expect to see if I can move my mouse, a score of zero again, and I change this to be green and run it again, we get a score of zero. Why do we get a score of zero? Because the minimum is green and 10 should be a score of five. Let's try that again. Maybe it's 10 or more. Let's run that again. Execute request, score of five. There we go, I just didn't hit the button correctly. So uh, these rules are being executed. The rules are not the purpose of this video tutorial. These decision server rules are not what I'm going to talk about here. The decision server rules are the services which exist as part of a larger solution where we can invoke these rules and get answers. But this story is about decision server insights. What if we wanted to invoke the services of these rules from within a DSI environment? We could, in principle, make requests to DSR from DSI and have DSR perform the execution of these rules on behalf of our environment. And that's what we're going to talk about. So let's switch over to DSI, Decision Server Insights. Now, I'm, I'm going to be blunt with you. The steps involved in getting this working are complicated. There are a lot of steps. Now, I didn't come up with this recipe, thank goodness. Instead, there's an excellent IBM Red Book, which uh, I'll put the link up here, which contains the recipe written out 
very clearly and precisely. Now, I followed that recipe and it worked. But what I want to do is I want to show you here through this video what those steps look like when they're done. I'm not going to bore you with following the steps uh, piece by piece because that, that would take us 30 minutes and we'd end up with a working solution but rather I'm going to show you what the solution looks like in the end. At a high level, at a very high level, we start by creating something called an OSGI bundle. Now an OSGI bundle is a technology technique that is uh, useful and prevalent in Java that allows us to create Java code that is encapsulated into something called an OSGI module. Now the in English what that means is that I write a Java interface. Here's a simple Java interface and I call it gets I call the interface get score and it has a method within it called get score. And when we invoke get score it takes as input a in this case a string of a type and a price and it returns as a score. This is an interface. This is how we could use this module without knowing how it's implemented. Next, we provide an implementation. That's an implementation of this interface. And the way I implemented it was I implemented the interface and here is our get score method. Now what this does, and again the the the, the, the core of this is isn't that important. Just get the get the get the details of it isn't that important. Just get the gist of it. But what it does is it builds a JSON object representing an inbound request to DSR. So DSR is litting, listening there, waiting for incoming REST requests. This code builds a JSON object. It builds the request that will point to the DSR server. It executes that request against the DSR server. It receives a JSON object as a response and we pull the score from that JSON response object and we return the score. The rest is just housekeeping. So again, this is Java code that encapsulates the invocation of a REST request where that REST request is the REST service exposed by DSR. It's a REST request exposed by DSR. So uh, now, by having created these two Java components, a Java interface that says what the function looks like, and a Java implementation that provides the core of that interface, that when called makes a REST request against DSR, we're now at the point where we can bundle this code together into something called an OSGI bundle. Now, uh, oh, sorry, an OSGI module. Now, if we look at the result of building that OSGI module, it looks like this. Oh my gosh, it's a, it's a, a complicated OSGI component. I'm going to leave it on the screen here so that if you create your own, you can compare this yourself. Basically, using the wizard, we create an OSGI module. In the module, I've called it called ESR. Its dependencies, I said it's going to import some uh, Java X standard components. We're going to pull in some additional jar files. These are the jar files relating to making REST recall calls and parsing JSON. I'm going to describe how it's compiled. It compiles these components. And the result, as I say, is that we end up with an OSGI module. Now, why did we create an OSGI module? Because that can be called from within a DSI environment. The next thing I did was I created a new DSI project, just a simple DSI solution project. And in that solution project, I defined a BOM, a business object model. Now, the BOM was very simple. This is illustrative only. We define an entity and we define an event. And the event contains within it a type and a price. So you can imagine I'm going to write some rules which are going to receive a type and a price as input data. Now, here comes the new piece of magic. We created a new 
rule project. So if you go to other and we go and search on rule project, you can create this thing called a rule project. Now the idea behind a rule project is that that can contain additional business object models. So I created a rule project and I created a new bomb. Now you do that by going new, other and create a bomb entry. Now when I created that bomb entry, let's open it up, I pointed it at the interface that was created in the OSGI module and that introspected that and created an entry in my BOM relating to the get score interface. Now if we drill into that get score interface we see it's got my method get score. Okay so far so good. Now here is a necessary component. You have to specify in the custom properties at the class level the custom property, osgi.service, case is important, and the name of the class that you're exposing. You know, it's a simple mechanical mapping, but it has to be done. That will allow <coughs> DSI to recognize that this class is implemented, <coughs> excuse me, is implemented as an OSGI module. Now, if we look now at the member of this class, this score method, I declared it as static and then changed the navigation phrase. So the navigation phrase now becomes the score with the type of parameter 1, or 0 rather, and price of parameter 1. So this now has allowed me to verbalize this reference to this method, which is implemented by the DS, the call DSR module, which is implemented by a call to the REST service, which is targeting decision server rules. My gosh, what a lot of parts. So let's say it again. We've got DSR running. DSR, decision server rules, has an, a business rule defined to it. That business rule is exposed by a REST request. I created a OSGI module and in that OSGI module I created a, 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 an interface and implemented that OSGI module interface by making a REST call to the DSR service provider. I then created a DSI solution project, then created a rule project, and in the rule project pointed it at the OSGI module interface to build a BOM. In the BOM definition, I specified that the class would have this additional property, and then the members of the class that I want to expose, I define them as static with a verbalization. Now, having done all that, I can now define a DSI rule agent and in the rule agent define an action rule and in the action rule use the verbalization of the methods that I exposed. So now I can code things like the score with the type of type of this event and the price of the price of this event and this language here, this new language baked in to my action rule mechanisms comes exactly from the verbalization of this encapsulated OSGI module which calls DSR. The score with type of blah blah blah, the score with type of blah blah blah. Great! That's wonderful! Now I've deployed this module, I've deployed this DSI solution and I've written myself here a DSI test client and in my DSI test client I have the ability to emit a new event. So we emit a new event here where the price is 30, the type is blue. I run this, so I run that as an event sequence. I'm now running that on DSI and if we look at my output of my uh, environment and it's a time now is 2.14 p.m. and 2.14 p.m. we see here 
that the output of my DSI rule is the echo of the type is blue, the price is 30, and the result and the resulting score is 20. The resulting score is the result of this, 20. Now, if I now go back into my decision server environment and I change it here, I'm a business person and I now say, well, this, the, the score needs to be 30 now. Score needs to be 30. And I go back up and I uh, delete my existing rules because I want to leave the version number the same. So I delete my existing rules. Done. And now I come over here and I redeploy. Uh, make sure I'm in the right project. I redeploy to my rule execution server. Next, next, finish, work click, done. I've redeployed that rule and I go back to my DSI environment, back to my DSI environment, and I rerun my event sequence. I rerun my event sequence. Here we go. So now it's rerunning that event sequence. It's pushing a new event into DSI. DSI is then going to rerun the DSI rules. The DSI rules are then going to execute that OSGI module. That OSGI module is going to invoke DSR, and the end result is that we have now invoked a replaced version of the business rules without having changed any of the rule values in DSI. So what this allows us to do at a very high level, and this is the business value, at a very high level, I can now write my DSI rules and I can write my ODM standard business rules. I can write those in separately and distinctly from each other. I can business manage those ODM rules and by changing the values of those ODM rules, we can end up affecting the operation of the DSI rules. That's awesome. That's excellent stuff. As I say, it's, it's quite complicated. I'm not making any bones about it. It's quite complicated to set up the environment. But once the environment is set up, using it becomes a breeze. So if you go through these activities once to set up your linkage between decision server rules and DSI, then once done, the management of the ability to add new verbalizations of language constructs to call DSR becomes really, really simple. Again, I hope you found some value in this uh, technical video tutorial, and I look forward to making more in the future. Thanks, guys. Bye for now.